In this video, I'll take a look at a couple of low-cost FM receivers. I'll cover the pinouts, wiring, and parts needed for creating or integrating an FM radio into your own project. I'll explore some of the available features, peek at some sample code, and finally show the optional integration into Home Assistant for controlling and viewing data from the FM receiver. Hi, and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. Does anyone even listen to FM radio anymore? And if you do, are you actually using an FM receiver or are you streaming that FM station over something like iHeartRadio? But sometimes it's hard to beat the simplicity of a standalone FM receiver where you don't need internet, you don't need Bluetooth, and you don't need any kind of third-party device to receive FM stations. Now, in my case, I wanted to add FM radio reception to my DIY amp. Now this amp can already play local music via DLNA or USB, and it can also stream from some services like Sirius XM. But I wanted to add simple FM radio reception. And since we'll be connecting this FM receiver to an ESP8266 or an ESP32, it also gives us the ability to add MQTT and be able to control that receiver in Home Assistant. I'm going to take a look at a couple of different types of FM receivers because I had a problem with the first one, which you're going to see here in just a minute. This is the TEA 5767 FM receiver module. We take a look at it, it's really pretty basic in terms of connections. It does run off of five volts, so we will need a five volt and a ground connection. It is an I squared C device, so that means we need two pins connected to our controller. That's gonna be data and clock. There are also two 3.5 millimeter jacks here. One of them is for the antenna, which does come with it. And the other one will be our output to either our power speakers or our amplifier. So for this initial test, I only need a few other parts. I'm going to use a Wemos D1 Mini, an ESP8266. Yes, you could use an ESP32 with this. And so I will just be using two pins on this, my D1, which is my clock, and my D2, which is my data line for I squared C. I am going to go ahead and power this off the 5 volt and ground pin off of this, at least initially for my testing. In a final install, I would probably run 5 volts uh, directly to this and not through the, the D1 Mini. But for this test, we're going to do that. So I'm going to need four DuPont jumper wires to connect my four pins to the D1 Mini. Also, I'm going to use this small little Bluetooth speaker. Uh, the reason I'm going to use this is it actually does have an auxiliary input on it, so I will be able to connect this directly to this speaker for my sound. So I will need a 3.5 millimeter audio cable, and finally just a USB cable to connect this to the PC to flash the code onto it. That's all we're going to need for this initial test. And this is all there is to the connections. Again, for now, I'm running 5 volts and ground from my Wemos D1 Mini to the FM receiver along with the data and clock lines for I squared C. I've attached the antenna and my output. This will connect to my speaker and the USB cable will connect the D1 Mini to the computer. And that's really all the connections I need to run the initial test. Okay, for this initial test, I'm actually just going to run a very simple Arduino sketch that's really just going to play a fixed station. I'm using Arduino right now because at least at the time of this recording, there was no support in ESP Home for the TEA5767. Maybe that'll change down the road. For now, I'm going to go ahead and use an Arduino sketch. I could go through all the hassle of creating a custom component in ESP Home, but really it's a lot easier just to use Arduino at this point. And if this does work, I will come back and add MQTT to this sketch so that I can integrate it and control it through Home Assistant. But all it's doing right now is, again, is just going to upload and run a fixed frequency. And I'll be able to output some information here to the serial console. So I'm just going to double check that I've got the right COM port and the right board. And I do. So I'm just going to go ahead and upload this. Okay, so it is running. Take a look at this. And there is the COM port. I don't know how well you can hear that in the background. I've got to be careful with copyright acts, but it actually is pretty crystal clear. So it does appear to work and appear to work well. So now it's adding some additional features. And again, let me go ahead and turn this music down a little bit. It would be possible to, again, add push buttons or even a rotary knob to the D1 Mini to be able to control your stations. So I'm going to add a few other things to it and come back and test it again. Hey, there is one thing that I've discovered. I'm going to turn the volume up here. 
Don't know how well you will be able to hear it on the mic. Let me... The number of attorneys in the attorney general's office is now. It's 300 plus you attorneys. You listen closely. And look, if you're going to waste time on things a, like TikTok and Facebook and all these other things, with an occasional louder click, I don't know, one of those 300 say, I've noticed this you on get to the multiple stations now, on? and I've also messed around with the wiring, and it just seems to always have that tick, 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 tick sound in the background. Not as noticeable when you're playing music, but it is definitely noticeable and definitely with that louder click. So that may be a problem with this thing and may actually make it uh, unusable. So I decided to try ordering a different FM receiver module. This is based on the SI4703 chip as opposed to the TEA5767 of the previous one. And there are a number of differences between these two other than just the chip itself. For one thing, if we take a look at the old one, we'll notice this one is significantly smaller. And part of the reason for that is it does not have an external antenna hookup. Apparently it uses the audio cable as the antenna, so we're gonna have to see how well that works. Another difference is this does not already have the pin headers attached, which personally I'm thrilled about. Yes, it does mean I have to solder something onto here, but at least it gives me the option of doing direct wiring or wiring on pin headers in the orientation that I need. Another thing that you'll notice that it does have significantly more pins. Well, that's partially because it has some additional features as well. So this is still an I squared C device, so we still have our data and our clock line. This is powered by 3.3 volts instead of five volts. So that's something very important to note. Hook it up to five volts, it's probably not going to like that. But it also has this SEN and a reset pin that can be used in combination to just change this from a two wire to a three wire configuration. We're just gonna be using the two wire, but it does mean I have to connect a reset pin. So I will have one extra wire running to my D1 mini. And then we see a couple of GPIO pins and this also has what's called RDS, the radio data system, which means it's able to decode some of that data that's in the FM stream. Those are normally the things you would see on your radio, like maybe the station call letters or maybe even the artisan song that are currently playing that you might see displayed on your car radio. But for the initial test, we're just going to go with the basics of hooking up the minimum number of pins, again, seeing if we can get a decent quality audio signal without any of the popping that we had with the TEA 5767. Okay, I've wired up the SI4703, and again, it's very similar to the TEA 5767. The only difference is I'm using 3.3 volts here instead of five volts, and I have added this green wire, which is from D5 on the D1 mini to the reset pin over here. So now I'm going to hook this up and again, just flash a simple test sketch and see what kind of audio we get. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and upload again, a really simple test script. This is really the same library that was used before and that is uploaded. We'll take, turn that on and I am definitely getting audio and it seems to be fine. I'm moving the little wire around to see what kind of reception I get. It seems to be okay. I'm going to try a few other stations here. But I'm definitely not getting that, that clicking sound that I was hearing before, so that's promising. I'm going to try a few other frequencies, and if that still looks good, then I'll start looking at some of those advanced features, like getting back data through the RDS decoder on board. And just a quick little update with not much effort at all, just using another actual library script. I now have the ability to do things through the serial monitor, such as changing presets, which is a little bit difficult to see here, but the most important thing, if you look at the output, you'll see that I'm now getting RDS information, including in this particular case, I'm actually getting the artist and the song name coming back along with the station identifier. So that is extremely promising of being able to take this information and output it onto some kind of LCD display as part of my amp. So pretty happy with this chip. I think this is the one I'm gonna proceed with. As I mentioned, if you want this to be a complete standalone FM receiver, you can easily add things like a rotary controller, push buttons, even a display, or if you want to get really fancy, something like the ILI 9341 touchscreen to your ESP32 or your ESP8266. Now, I'm not going to be doing that since I'm going to be adding this to my DIY amp, and it already has the rotary encoder and the push buttons and a touch display. But if you want to know more about doing that, there are actually examples in the radio library that you can look at. And there are plenty of other videos here on YouTube about how to build a complete FM radio. 
Now, another reason I don't need to add those physical controls is I'm going to integrate this into Home Assistant. And to do that, I simply took my existing radio code and I wrapped it in functions to provide Wi-Fi access, over-the-air updates so that I can unplug it from the PC and I can power it via any USB source like these little wall plugs. As long as it can provide somewhere around 2 amps, it's fine for this project. But more importantly, I'm going to add MQTT. MQTT is a great way to integrate your DIY electronics projects into Home Assistant. If you want to know a little bit more about that, I do have another video on integrating your devices using MQTT, and I'll put it up here and down in the video description. And now with MQTT, you see I can create this dashboard in Home Assistant. Now this is just a sample dashboard. I'll eventually roll this into my DIY AMP dashboard. But this will work for demonstration purposes and shows how MQTT can be used to get data back from and control the receiver. So I'm going to turn it on here and I have the volume turned down a little bit low just to make sure I don't get into copyright issues here. But I am tuned in and playing a station. I have a number of presets that I can toggle my way through or I can select directly. I also have the ability to either tune with a slider down here or I can actually enter in a direct frequency, 104.5 in here. And since that happens to be a preset, it lights up as well. Now, if I select a station, for example, that is sending out RDS data, you can see that it just popped in here as well. Now, the one thing that I did find is that different stations send this data differently. So for example, and again, there's an ad that is showing. If I go over to this station and we give it just a second for the RDS data to pop in, You'll notice it's coming in in bits and pieces. If you're actually watching this on an FM radio, what you would be seeing is scrolling text, but I don't know a way as of right now to display scrolling text within a Home Assistant dashboard. So you're seeing the updates there, but that would normally be scrolling text. The important thing is it is receiving all of the RDS data. It is coming in and it seems to be working perfectly. And of course, you have other control features of the amp, like a mute option to toggle between stereo and mono. And again, IP address, all that kind of information is here and available. If you want to see the code that I used, including the YAML to integrate it into Home Assistant and create that sample dashboard, check out the video description where you'll find a link to a GitHub repo. There'll also be links to all the parts that I showed in this video, along with links to additional information. Hopefully someday, support will be added for FM receivers in the ESP home, which will make the integration a little bit easier. Should that ever happen, I will pin a comment down below. As always, I'd like to say thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.